Hello everyone, welcome to day 18th of May League Code Challenge. I hope all of you are having a great time. My name is Sanchit Deja. I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe. And here I present day 690 of daily League Code problem. The question that we have in today is critical connections in a network. Here in this question, we are given an undirected graph. What we need to do, we need to identify all the critical connections that exist in this graph. How do you define a critical connection? It's really simple. When you remove a particular, if you remove a particular edge, if that removal leads to generation of two separate components in the graph, then that signifies that it's a critical connection. For example, here, if you remove this particular edge connecting one and three, you will see that two new components are getting generated. One component has three nodes in it, one, two and zero. Other component has a singular node in it, which is three. As a result of which, this particular edge connecting one and three becomes a critical connection. However, if you remove the connection between one and two, you will see that the total components in this graph remains as one because two, zero, one and three still remains connected by this particular path. As a result of which, this edge is not a critical connection. Without further ado, let's quickly walk through the presentation section where I'll explain you the Tarzan's algorithm in detail and I promise you'll get a good hold of that concept. So do watch it till the very end. Lead code 1192, critical connections in a network. It's a hard level question on lead code. However, I don't feel the same. If you are aware of Tarzan's algorithm, then this problem would be a medium level problem. And in case if you have any doubt understanding this question, or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to ping on the Telegram group or the Discord server of Coding Decoded, both the links are stated in the description. So do check them out. Even before jumping onto the details of the core algorithm, let's walk through few test cases. Let's hypothetically assume you are given a graph that has four nodes in it, one, two, three, and four. And you can see that a cycle is getting formed in this graph. One is connected with two, two is connected with three, three is connected with four, four is connected with one. So in case we remove any one particular edge from this graph, let's remove this one. You will still see that all the four nodes are still reachable from one another. Four is reachable to three, three is reachable to two, two is reachable to one. And there is only one component that exists in this graph. The takeaway here is if we remove any edge that exists in a cycle, then that edge will not be a critical connection of that graph. It is easily removable. Let's walk through another test case. Here, there are four nodes, one, two, three, and four. And you can see that no cycle is getting formed. All of them are linear in nature. One is connected with two, two is connected with three, three is connected with four. And in case we remove any of the edge, what do you see? Let's remove this one. So you see that two new components get, got formed. One component has one, two, three in it, and the other component has four in it. Similarly, if I remove some other edge, let me just do that. And this time, let me just remove this particular edge. Again, you will see that two components get formed, one containing one, two, other containing three and four. As a result of which, if we are able to identify that a linear hierarchy exists between nodes, then all the edges in that linear hierarchy are critical in nature. If you delete one edge from it, different components will get formed and therefore they turn critical. Now comes the question, how can we algorithmize this up? So let's walk through these cases again and this time we'll try to build an algorithm around it. We will do a simple DFS reversal and along with doing the DFS reversal, we'll keep track of the lowest possible node ID reachable for each node along that path. What I'm trying to say, let's walk through an example so that you get a good hold of the concept. Uh, also, we will create the next ID variable that will tell us the next ID that can be allocated to any node. And let's initialize it to one. So let's get started. Let's start with uh, the first node. We, I'm performing the DFS starting from one. And since one right now doesn't have any ID allocated to it. So let's go ahead and allocate one to it. And let's update this value uh, for the next iterations to happen to two. So what I'm going to do, I can move in any of these directions towards four or towards a uh, two. Let's move towards two. So I'll move towards two and I'll mark one as visited. So uh, let's proceed ahead. Uh, what do we see here? We see here that uh, uh, two is also a fresh 
node no id has been allocated to it so we'll allocate 2 to it and let's update the next id available to 3 along with this let's move to the next node uh, we can't go back along the previous path that is 1 you have to move towards the next available path which is 3 so we'll move towards the third node and let's allocate id to it it's again a fresh node no id was allocated in the past so 3 gets allocated to it and this variable gets updated to 4. Again let's proceed in the forward direction. We'll move towards the 4th node and no id was allocated to it. Therefore what we are going to do, we'll update this to 4 uh, and the id this node gets is 4. The next id available gets updated to 5. Let's proceed ahead. Again we see there's only one connection that is left which is connecting to the first node which is 1. So let's move to that node and what do we see here? It's an old node. Since it's an old node, an ID has already been allocated to it. What is that ID? That ID is 1. So what we are going to do? We will pick up the ID which is lowest among these two IDs. The node, the ID of the current node and ID of the next uh, available node which is 1. So out of 1 and 4, which one is the lower one? 1 is the lower one. So this gets updated to 1. And now you can see that both these nodes got the same IDs. That means this node is not a critical connection. Why I'm saying this, you will get to know in some time. But remember, whenever you see that both the nodes have the same IDs, that signifies it's not a critical connection. Let's proceed ahead. From 4, there are no more nodes left. As a result of which, we'll simply backtrack to the previous node. So what was the previous node that we visited? The path along which we came, it was 3. So at 3, again we will check what is the lower node, lower node, lowest node ID that has been allocated to 3. So previously 3 has 3 in it and 4 has 1 in it now. So which one is the lower one out of 1 and 3? 1 is the lower one, so this gets updated to 1. And again we can say that this particular connection is not a critical connection because both the lowest IDs allocated are same. Let's proceed ahead. Again from 3, there are no more outgoing nodes as a result of which we'll loop back to the incoming path. So what is that previous node that we came across? 2 is that node. And at 2, what ID do we see? We see 2. So out of 1 and 2, which one is the lower one? 1 is the lower one. So 2 gets an ID of 1. Again we can see that uh, since the, both, the, both these IDs of 3 and 2 are equal as a result of which this is not a critical connection. Let's proceed ahead. And again, let's we can say that a 2 doesn't have any outgoing edges. Therefore, we'll backtrack to the parent. So what was the parent? 1 was the parent. At 1, what ID do we see? We see 1. At 2, what ID do we see? We see 1. As a result of which, this particular edge is again not a critical connection. So far, so good. Now let's talk about the second case. The second test case that we discussed in the previous slide 1 2 3 and 4 let's try and apply the same algorithm over here and let me just change the color of pen for better understanding and let's create the next id variable and initialize it to 1 so let's start the dfs reversal from this particular node no id is allocated to it 1 gets allocated and this next id variable gets updated to 2 let's proceed ahead we are moving towards uh, the second node which is this one so no ID was allocated to it, it gets 2. Let's proceed ahead. No ID was allocated to it, it gets 3. No ID was allocated to it, it gets 4. And at 4 you can see that there are no more outbound edges. So we have to traverse back. Go back to the caller node from 4. What was the caller node of 4? 3 was the caller node. At 3 what is the lowest node value that you see? You see th 3. And out of 3 and 4, which one is the lower one? 3 is the lower one. 3 already has that value. Therefore, there is no update in 3. And we can see that the lowest values are different among 3 and 4. Therefore, we can say that the, the edge connecting 3 and 4 is critical connection. Let's continue the process. Let's go back to the caller of 3, which is 2. Uh, let's uh, assign uh, the lowest nodes out of 2 and 3 to 2. So it, it remains as it is. Therefore, we can say that the lowest possible nodes across 2 and 3 is, are different and this particular edge is a critical connection. Let's do the same thing again. Let's go back to the caller of 2 which is 1 and at 1 let's allocate 
the lowest possible node out of one and two it remains as it is as one and we can say that this particular edge since the lowest possible nodes are different is acting as the critical connection the crux here is whenever you see different lowest ids allocated to two nodes by moving in the backwards direction after the dfs traverses then you can say that that particular edge is acting as a critical node if they are equal then you can say that that particular edge is not acting as a critical connection now let's apply this algorithm onto a bigger example so that you get a good hold of the concept so let's take a different graph something on these lines and if i ask you guys which node is acting as a critical connection then this node will act as a critical connection so what is eventually going to happen let's start the iteration what we will do will create the next available id variable and initialize it to 1 let's do that uh, let's start the dfs from 1 itself no id is allocated to it one gets allocated let's move towards 2 and again no id is allocated let's allocate 2 to it let's move towards 3 no id is allocated to it let's allocate 3 let's update let's move ahead and let's move towards 4 no id is allocated uh, let's allocate 4 to it uh, let's update the next available id variable to 5 and uh, let's proceed ahead from 4 you can see that uh, the next node in the queue already has an id available to it which is 1 so what we are going to do we will simply update the lowest possible id of 4 to the lowest out of 1 and 4 which one is the lower one 1 is the lower one so this gets updated to 1 again let's do the same thing let's tra traverse back and at 3 what do you what you can see that what is the lowest possible id the lowest possible id out of 1 and 3 is 1 Therefore, uh, what we will be doing, uh, we will be allocating the lowest possible ID for 3 as 1. Also, as you can see that the lowest possible IDs for 3 and 4 happens to be the same. Therefore, this particular edge is not a critical connection. Similarly, this particular edge is not a critical connection. Let's continue the process. And at 3, we can see that there is another edge that is outgoing towards 5 instead of going back to 2 what we are going to do we'll move towards the 5 uh, because it's an it's a fresh edge so we will give precedence to it and uh, what we will do we will simply allocate the next available id to it so it doesn't have any id 5 gets allocated this gets updated to 6 from 5 let's continue the same process uh, we'll move let's move towards 6 6 doesn't have any id 6 gets allocated uh, from 6 let's proceed ahead uh, 7 doesn't have any id to it 7 gets allocated let's proceed ahead uh, from 7 8 doesn't have any id to it let's allocate 8 to it and next will will id gets updated to 9 at 8 there's only one outgoing edge which is towards 5 5 already has a node allocated to it which is 5 out of 5 and 8 which one is the lower one 5 is the lower one so this gets updated to 5 and as you can see that both these nodes get the same node therefore this edge is not a critical one let's let's go back since there are no more edges outgoing from 8 so let's go back to the caller which is 7 at 7 what do you see what is the node allocated to it 7 is allocated to it so out of 5 and 7 which one is the lower one 5 is the lower one so this gets updated to 5 and both these nodes get the same node therefore this edge is also not a critical edge let's go back uh, from 7 as well since there are no more edges the, the previous node was 6 so at 6 what node is allocated to it 6 is allocated to it so out of 6 and 5 which one is the lower one 6 uh, 5 is the lower one so this gets updated to 5 and therefore we can say that this is not a critical edge let's go back to the caller of 6 the caller of 6 is 5 at 5 what is the lowest node allocated to it it is 5 at 6 what is the lowest node allocated to it so it is again 5 both of them are equal therefore this node is again is not a critical edge and let me just change the color of pen for better understanding let's go back to the color of 5 what is the color of 5 the color of 5 happens to be 3 at 3 what is the lowest node allocated to it it is 1 at 5 what is the lowest node allocated to it which is 5 and we will allocate uh, and update the lowest node for 3 to the lowest one out of 1 and 5 so it remains as it is as a result of which we can see that both these nodes get different ids have different ids and this node is acting as a critical edge awesome as soon as we identify that the lowest nodes of 3 and 5 are different we will add this particular edge to our answer data set so the answer data set gets 3 and 5 as the critical edge
let's continue the process let's go back to the collar of 3 since there are no more outgoing edges what is the collar of 3 2 is a collar of 3 at 2 what is the lowest node allocated to it it is 2 out of 2 and 1 which one is the lower one 1 is the lower one so this gets updated to 1 since the lowest node ids for 2 and 3 are same 1 1 therefore this edge is not will not act as a critical connection let's proceed ahead let's go back to the caller of 2 the caller of 2 is 1 at 1 what is the lowest possible node value which is 1 at 2 what is the lowest possible node value again it is 1 therefore this node again will not as a will not act as a critical connection and with this we have completed the entire graph traversal you will see that we are traversing each and every node only once and as a result of which the time complexity of this particular graph turns out to be equal to the number of edges that we have number of edges that we have so let's quickly walk through the coding section and conclude it further i'll be doing the same thing as i have talked in the presentation here i've created a global variable which is acting as my next id uh, so that i can allocate ids lowest ids to my nodes in my graph while doing the traversal so this is in sync with the one that i have shown in the presentation moving ahead i've created my graphical structure using the connections list of lists that i have and this is again pretty simple and straightforward i have created my answer variable and remember while creating the graph you are basically creating an undirected graph uh, that means uh, a will be getting connected to b and b will be connecting will be getting connected to a moving ahead i have created my answer variable i have created a visited array and also i have created the lowest ids array which will actually be responsible for allocating lowest ids while moving in the dfs fashion and uh, moving ahead i have created the tarjan's algorithm helper method it accepts the graph it accepts the parent id it accepts the next id and uh, next id by default would be zero in this case we are starting from zero uh, and uh, moving ahead i have passed in the visited array i have passed in my answer and i have passed in my lowest ids to it once i'm done with this i simply return the answer variable so let's go and walk through the tarjan's algorithm and what i have written over it over there so it accepts graph, it accepts parent ID, it accepts current node ID under consideration, it accepts visited array, it accepts the answer list and uh, the last one is the lowest IDs allocated to each node. The first step is to mark the current node as visited and I also update my lowest ID for the current node equal to the next ID as we are moving ahead in the DFS fashion and for the next allocation i update my next id variable so remember this is a global variable that we have defined moving ahead i have extracted the current node lowest id in a variable and let's uh, extract it from the lowest id array that i have i move across all the connections that exist in my graph i check if my neighbor id has been visited in the past or not if it is not visited then I apply tarjan's algorithm onto its neighboring connections and remember to update the parent ID and the neighborhood ID appropriately while invoking this DF, uh, this Tarjan algorithm DFS helper method. Uh, once I'm done with this, I update my lowest ID, add the node, current node ID to the one mass dot minimum, whatever exists currently and the lowest ID add the neighbor ID. And in case uh, my uh, current node lowest ID, which we cache at line 36 over here, is lower than the lowest id at the neighborhood id if this is the if this case is met that simply means that it's a critical connection i add it to my answer i add node id and neighborhood id as an edge uh, representing an edge into my answer set and once i'm done with this uh, i'm out of the loop my work is done uh, there is also another corner case that we need to think of consider there are only two nodes in the cycle wherein the neighborhood ID happens to be equal to the parent ID in all such cases we'll have to skip the operation because you'll we'll land up in an infinite kind of a loop so you have to take care of this explicitly so that's another corner case which I didn't talk about in the presentation but nevertheless the rest of the algorithm I have completely discussed and with this let's try it up accepted 75% uh, faster which is pretty good and the time complexity as I have already told it's equal to the number of edges that we have. With this let's wrap up today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question.